There we are, Chief. Yep, there we are. Can we're here, we're live. <laughs> yes, Chief. Hey, we're live, we're ready to yes, go. Chief. Oh, yes, I am Chief. excited today. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone out there in Facebook land. Thank you so much for joining us. To all the airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coasties, family members, retirees, veterans, thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, if you like what you see today, make sure you follow the exchange page. And I've been learning, watching a lot of YouTube. Smash that like button, right, JT? You got to oh, smash yeah. the like button. <laughs> like, share, comment, you know, all of it. <laughs> and you see, I'm learning from the pros out here. Before we get to our guest, Julie, Leah, how are you ladies doing today? Good, Chief. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Good to I'm see you. Out. I'm doing outstanding. So let, let's get right to it. Julie, you mind introducing our guest? I don't mind at all. We are thrilled about today's guest. He is the very first Air Force veteran to join us. He Ooh. served 11 years on active duty, including as a tactical air control party specialist. His creative mind is now part of a very special company that's run by veterans, and he helps bring you an amazing cup of coffee. Please help us welcome Jared J.T. Taylor from Black Rifle Coffee Company. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> the grand intro, the grand intro. JT, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, thank you for spending a few minutes with you know our audience. I'm sure you're going to boost some morale. We're going to ask you some great there questions. Absolutely. And thank you to everybody watching. If you'll go ahead and drop a note in the comments, leave some love for JT and let us know where you're watching from. And if you want to enjoy this with all your friends, start a watch party. There you go. <laughs> they're, they're getting the tactics down. That's good to hear. <laughs> we've been watching your videos, so we've been learning. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, JT. So once again, thanks for coming on. So first things first, tell us a little bit about yourself and your military background. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I came in right, right at 17. Uh, as soon as uh, 2003 hit and uh, shipped out to basic training February of 2003. While I was in basic training, we started the Iraq invasion. So that was, uh, to me, that was kind of cool. I was like, all right, we can go to war again. Uh, and uh, I was lucky enough to get selected to go into the TACP, uh, the Tactical Air Command and Control Party Apprentice course, where I went down to Herbert Field, Florida, and uh, got to, you know, ended up making it through surprisingly as a, as an 18 year old kid <laughs> that, that, that didn't weigh that much at the time. And, uh, then I went to airborne school, the U S army basic airborne course in Fort Benning went up to Fairchild and did the SEER course and then ended up at the 14th ASOS, uh, which was then Pope air force base. Uh, and I did the, the first stint of my career there deployed twice to Iraq, the first time uh, in support of 18th Airborne Corps and was in the, the core joint operations center. So looking at big picture on an entire theater spectrum of strategy and, 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 and the use and allocation of air power and how that implements with uh, the ground force commander's intent over the entire battlefield of the theater. And then I did, a, I, I volunteered for a second deployment without going home and went up into Mosul in 2005 mm. and and got to hit the ground with the 172nd striker brigade and and got to support third special forces group and a, a couple of other, other units while i was up there and then in 2007 uh went into the surge with the 82nd airborne second of the 325 and spent uh, about 10 months in downtown baghdad just duking it out with the jay shalmati militia which was 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 quite exciting and from there i i became an instructor uh, for the TACP schoolhouse and spent four years there teaching the young guys and, and left there, went to Fort Bliss, which you see, you guys see here, this is the seventh day sauce, uh, squadron patch, the hustlers. Uh, and then at that time, uh, around 2014 is when, is when I met Evan and myself and Matt were running the, uh, apparel brand article 15 clothing. And, uh, we started going into business with Evan and a number of different kind of ventures that were going on. You know, everybody was kind of throwing out ideas on where to go. And then Evan came to us and right, right before November of 14 and says, 
I have an idea to to roast coffee because I've been I've been studying I've been studying and roasting my own coffee for the last ten years, and I know so much about coffee. This sounds this sounds fun, and you know, at first me and Matt like. You know, everybody kind of looks around and is like coffee. Like there, there wasn't in 2014. There, there, there really wasn't anybody doing coffee in the military or tactical space at all. So we were like, all right, well, let's go for it. And he he came back to us that December with a logo in the name Black Rifle Coffee Company, and we were like, all right, we're in. And uh, so then in 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 2017 is when I transitioned off of active duty and went into the guard and ended my Air Force career in the 116th ASOS in Washington State. Uh, I got out in uh, in in right right before 2018 hit. Wow, you took us through the whole the whole life right there. And yeah. you were a uh, TACP instructor. That's a Herbert Field, right? Yeah, it was then, and now, but now it's on uh, uh, Chapman Air Base uh, out here in. Uh, in San Antonio, Texas. So now we've Air Force Special Warfare is is creating the Air Force Special Warfare training campus. So everybody is now being housed out here, and and there is a phenomenal uh, updated program now for anybody looking into go to the uh, four career fields that are part of Air Force Special Warfare now. Go ahead and sell it. What is it? What is it? Let's tell let's tell these young kids watching might be watching. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you let's were sell. looking. If you were looking for the adventure and you were looking, you were looking to get on the battlefield like like no one else. I, I mean, I like to say this: uh, those four jobs get to see all the work that that everybody in the Air Force puts in. You have the front row seat. So me sitting on a top of a building in Baghdad, calling in an F sixteen an an F sixteen fighter jet from Fort Worth, Texas, one of the Spads. You know, we're looking at all the work everybody puts in puts in to make the Air Force effective from from the bomb loaders to the medical staff to to logistics to your 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 loadies and your your flight line guys your crew chiefs and everything I get to sit in the front row and watch that thing work the way it was designed to work so if, if you are looking to go into one of these career fields and that is uh it's now one Zulu one one Zulu two one Zulu three and one Zulu four it's Pararescue, Combat Control, TAC-P, and Special Reconnaissance. Now's the time to do it because they have scientifically, grotesquely modified the training pipeline, and it's, it's, it's more advanced than it's ever been. Do you go back to the training house? Do you, do you still talk to the instructors there? Absolutely. Uh, most of the instructors now were students of mine, so... And, and they know that I live here. So, you know, you get those phone calls of, hey, did you ever face this when you were an instructor? Like, absolutely. <laughs> so you're like a mentor for them. When I can be, you know, the, or the jester, whatever, whatever one you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's a lot of good information, JT. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so Black Rifle Coffee Company is known for its commitment to veterans. Tell us about the company and why taking care of veterans is so vital to what you do and what makes your coffee the best. Well, uh, when it comes to the veteran aspect, I mean, this is this comes straight down to uh, what you see in our content. You know, we have this series called It's Who We Are. You know, this isn't a this isn't a marketing proposition. This is who we are. I you know, I. I served just shy of, of 15 years. Evan served 20 years. Matt served five years of active duty, but did another 10 years of, of government service with different agencies. So when it comes down to it, this is where we, where we did the brunt of, of, of our work was, was with the military and, and leaving that and, and seeing kind of the, you know, we owe our success to the support from the community. So for us to turn back around and, and, and I've always said it like this, you know, we were lifted up on the step. Well, now we just flipped around and put our hand back out because we know who helped us get up there. And, and that's never going to change. Um, as far as what makes us the best coffee, you have the most passion inside this coffee with Evan and his, uh, his roasting and procurement team like they are there there's an entire team dedicated to traveling the world finding 
finding single source like like like, like Evan and, and and his team over there in the coffee. These guys are going down to the farms themselves, meeting the people that own the farms and the people that work on these places. They're sampling the coffee. They're 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 speaking to them, and then we are making deals directly with them. We aren't we aren't buying you know bulk from different areas and stuff like that. Like it is it is relationship based, and it's and it's directly sourced. Uh, from the guys on our team that are that are experts in, in when it comes to the field of coffee. And, you know, when Evan when Evan and came to us uh, in 2014 to 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 say, hey, let's start this coffee company. He came to us with this book full of his own roast profiles that he created. And, oh, I found these beans here that were really good and you could do this with this. And we should I mean, he had designs for for, for camping and travel gear. Like he was sketching out, it would be so good if I had a collapsible pour over system, things like this. Like, so it's like when you see some of our products to know the level of, of passion and just, it was a hobby and an obsession. And now we've turned it into our business and that's kind of, it, it reflects on our products. Black Rifle is more than just coffee. I mean, you guys have a huge social media following and your post, you have so much original, engaging content. Can you talk to us a little bit about your role in the content? And then how did your team marry coffee and entertainment in such a unique way? <laughs> well, and that's that's another unique thing about this group of people between Matt, Evan, myself, uh, Logan, and and Richard Ryan, and Eli Cuevas. Uh, you know, e Eli was, was also, a, a, he was in the army, uh, in Washington state and did a, a few of the same deployments that I was on actually. Um, all of us had a historical passion for film design, art and, and, uh, and editing. So the first, the first four years almost of this company's in session, in, like, like creation, all of this stuff was created in house by us. Like there were times when I walk in and Evan's, Evan is editing a video in premiere you know, Logan came came from from a film program to us after having made a documentary, and and you know, he's his passion is for film. I've been filming things since I was fourteen years old. Like I was editing stuff for you know, I was designing our air show videos and 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 everything for the Fourteenth ASOS you, sixteen years ago, um, and so so that passion being for film first, and then we all are obsessed with comedy so it's like <laughs> we we all learned this learned these skills and techniques and then the the business and everything kind of fell into that and it 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 really is a is a good marry of the two because when when the creators of the brand are the ones that are actually holding the cameras and know know how to do this stuff your flash to bang is quicker i mean we've yeah. done things where we had an idea in the morning the video shot by the afternoon, a final product by the evening, and the next day you're seeing it published. Wow, that's incredible. What has been your favorite video and why? My favorite one isn't out yet. Uh, Ooh, it's <laughs> hearing it first. <laughs> yes, so finally, it's, 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 a, it's a dream, like, like we're getting to that position that we've always, you know, dream to be in where we have a bigger budget. We, we all now have equipment that we never thought that we would have, you know, that you could only rent back in the day. Uh, you know, this camera right here that's coming at me is, is a full blown cinema camera that I can pick up and go film a movie with once we're done here, if we wanted to. So this project that is in the queue right now, it's going to be about 22 to 24 minutes in runtime. It's a short movie and it is, we have spent, so far close to five months on this and we still probably have another two months worth of work on it but when it comes out you guys are going to see a whole new level of of what it is that we can do when it comes to okay let's all focus on one thing and bring everybody in on this and let's see what we can make that's exciting what kind of feedback do you get from the veteran community uh on this well we hope it's good <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it will be. So we're seeing a lot of likes, likes and loves and a lot of feedback on our social media feed right now. Um, so lots of people saying they love your coffee and they love your commercials. 
And the commercial, yes, the commercials are, are going to, we're ramping that up. So, you know, uh, had a meeting this morning, uh, that essentially was like, Hey, that list of 600 ideas that we have start executing now. So, so they're going to see, they're going to get to see more, you know, we're, we've got a lot of funny ideas. We're doing a lot of period stuff. Now we've, we've got a lot of Vietnam stuff planned, uh, there's 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 one in the queue being filmed that's a, a a princess bride spin to Vietnam, and and it's wild. <laughs> I look forward to that. Wow. <laughs> hey JT, I'm I'm gonna backtrack real quick because um, if 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 a lot of people go to your your YouTube page or any other social media avenue, you talked about the who we are video. And I watched yours and I, I, I know you stayed in for 15 years, but prior to that, you got a reenlistment bonus of 90 grand and you said you spent it all on video equipment. <laughs> so take me, you know, and you, you've, been, you, you've been in the military 15 years, you know, you have all these entrepreneurs in the military, right? They want to do something with their life. You know, they want to own a business. They want to be successful like you. Uh, uh, what mindset are, are you are you in put me in your mindset when you said I'm taking my 90 grand and I'm buying video equipment like how confident is that <laughs> well I mean it, it it kind of is this like it, and I, it's the best way to explain it is is like I've been moonlighting since 2005 like once I came in once I did my CDC test once I got CMR and I earned my five level like once I had my career straight over here to me when I got off work, that time needed to be dedicated to either building myself a skill that offered me an exit strategy to the, the, the military or creating another revenue stream for myself that, that could, could let me live comfortably or, or, you know, get weird things that I, that I have, that I want, you know, because it's definitely something that, that, that I fancy. So, um, yeah, since I was 20 years old, pretty much, I was once, once I had my career on a path, it was, okay, where do I want to go? And around 2006 is when I, I, I just decided I, I really wanted to be a guy like like to me, success would have been being a gaffer on major Hollywood films. And a gaffer is somebody that puts up lights. It's not glamorous. Your name's in the credits, like at the bottom. But <laughs> but to me, to be around that was cool. So I just started working towards things like that. And and when I got my first reenlistment bonus was 2008. That was right right around the time when uh, all the camera manufacturers made full HD prosumer is what you called it. All these, these full HD production cameras available to people that could actually buy them that weren't, you know, in your 10,000, 20,000, $50,000 range. And I bought, I, I, I invested all my money in an editing an editing suite software and hardware and, and these cameras. And then I just, I went hard recruiting for TAC P. So if you go and look at a lot of the old videos back from 2008 to 2012, I was the one producing all those things because there was nothing really that exist, existed online for TAC P. And most recruiters didn't know anything about us because we weren't on Air Force bases. So unless you got a recruiter that had a friend of a friend or, or a neighbor or something, they never really knew who we were, what we did other than what they get in the pamphlet. So, so that was a focus of mine. And then to, to achieve, you know, making our own movie in Hollywood and being in our own movie and things like that, that was, that was something that was never even in front of me, but it just happened and it, it was pretty cool. And that, that's kind of uh, been really fun. I'm just glad like now we're in a position to where we just get to produce these ideas that we have and, you, and we get to produce them with our best friends. Oh, hey, so Chief, what, are what, you, hey Chief, are you seeing uh, some of the comments? I am, I am. I, I, let me ask uh, one question. I'll let you jump on those. Okay. Let me ask one more. JT, so what advice would you have for all these young military members, maybe family members, entrepreneurs? What advice do you have for all of them? They need to be, they need to be cognizant of what they dedicate their time to. You know, you, on a Sunday, you could, you could watch five hours worth of football or you could watch five hours worth of tutorials on something you want to learn. You know, we've never had technology at our fingertips like we do now. If you want to learn anything, like if I want to learn how to defeather our chickens that I have in the yard, I can search it on YouTube and they teach you how to make a jig. 
step by step. Like last night at three o'clock in the morning, I was watching a video on how to build my own ejection seat. <laughs> you never know, right? <laughs> Well, uh, I have recently started uh, an aerial demo de demonstration squadron in a in a in a uh, game called Digital Combat Simulator. It's a flight sim. So now we are we are like a version of the Blue Angels or the Thunderbirds, but we're called the Wet Boys. Um, so if you if you ever want to watch that, it's every night at 10 p.m. on twitch.tv backslash JT Article 15. We do we do full demonstration, but mostly it's us crashing into each other and laughing. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'll have to check that out. <laughs> so Chief, what I was wanting to see if you saw, Tom Dowd commented and he said, I have to try this coffee. JT is the man. Are you <laughs> are you familiar with Tom Dowd, JT? I'm not. Uh he is business partner in performance ex performance inspired with Mark Wahlberg. So Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a performance-inspired black rifle combo. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Mark Mark Wahlberg is really good friends with one of my friends, Marcus Luttrell. So uh, there, there's some synergy there. <laughs> yeah. You've been getting some other comments too. Uh, uh, Charles Zeller says he just finished a cup of Space Bear. I believe your Space Bear blend comes from Peru. There's a some Peruvian blend there, if I recall. He also says Range 15 is awesome. Oh, thank you. Uh, we, you know, range 15 was our first one. So, so if you loved it, great. If you, if you, if you thought it was, if you thought it was weird or trash, you know, let us, let us do another one. And then, because we, we learned so much on our first one, uh, but it was such a fun experience and, and, and the support that we got from, from major celebrities and stuff like that was a, a crazy. It was wild. It was, it was such an experience and it's free on Amazon. So anybody that wants to watch it can watch it on Amazon for free. You can watch not a war story, which is uh, an hour and a half documentary on how we made range 15, like step-by-step step, all the veterans that were, that were a part of it because still, I think we are the most decorated film film cast ever in the history of the world, you know, with, two Medal of Honor recipients, two Navy crosses, like four silver stars, 30 some odd purple hearts. Like you look at the, at the, at, at the awards of, of, of the cast of, of range 15 and it, it, it's pretty long. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. A lot, a lot of, a lot of great, a lot of great comments here. Uh, did, did he answer Sandy's question about who actually, do you guys sit around a room and, and how do your ideas come up? Like who creates the videos? Who edits them? Is it all? I mean, so so the dynamic of the group is uh at one point we all you know when we first got like our first building like everybody took a, an office for themselves and decorated it and made it great and then we all just sat in that office like by ourselves like okay wait what are we doing so now all of the partners have one office together and it is it if you walk in there it's just like slinging back and forth whether it's insults or 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 just razzing each other but then out of that all of a sudden it's like oh there's a video in there like <laughs> so that's a good little brainstorming session when you all sit together versus being alone in your offices and yes yes we we found we found that that putting the leadership in a communal environment was much more effective than us all being separated and wa walking to somebody's office when you had an idea or something. Now, now we're just yelling it out and we keep a giant list. At one point, there was a giant whiteboard that just had, you know, the, the vomit of ideas out there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so last week we were on the phone with uh, a friend of yours, Ryan Drexler. See oh really? He yeah. just tried to call me right now while you guys are on air. You should have picked, picked it up and said, "Hey, what's up? I'm on the phone." <laughs> talking with him. Yeah, I, I have to call him as soon as I get off with you guys. Yeah, yeah. Tell him, tell him what's up. Uh, he, he said great things about you. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. He, he, so he told me to mess with you, but I was like, "Nah, I'm not going to mess with you." <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, Ryan. He's just. Oh, go ahead and mess with that guy. <laughs> it's, 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 I don't know, eighth degree black belt in jujitsu or something like that. You know? <laughs> he was afraid of getting beat up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's trying to get me beat up. 
Hey, hey, JT, so how has the pandemic affected Black Rifle and, and what are you doing differently to continue to thrive during this challenging time? Well, uh, obviously for when when you look at like the San Antonio office, for example, it's it's all administrative. It's 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 department heads and stuff like that and marketing and things like that. So those people didn't need to be in office. We've we've all gone to work remotely. Um, but in in another uh, like retrospect, both myself and Matt and Logan all have had home studios where, you know, we've been editing and, and recording and recording music and things like that all from our homes. So we've had all the equipment there. So for us to just kind of move back to certain locations um, and then meet up to, to produce the content has been, I mean, really the, the most positive thing that, that came out of this was the lack of travel because Evan, myself and Matt and Logan are pulled into four different directions every single week that we've now been able to, to ideate and, and execute on ideas that we've had for years, but we just didn't have the time with everybody in one spot to do. Um, so we've been, we've been taking use of that, of, Hey, we're not, we're not getting pulled to New York or to Florida or Washington. Like, mm -hmm. Now we can start doing some of these things that we've had ideas for for a long time. So how does being a veteran and having that resiliency better position you and your team to stand strong amid this crisis and all the uncertainty? Well, I, it, I see a lot of the memes and a lot of the, the back talk and stuff on social media. It's like we're being a veteran and especially after after, you know, 14 plus years of that we're very used to just being told, Hey, you got to do this. Oh, okay. Hey, your plans have to get canceled because you can't go on leave now. Cause you got to do that. Oh, okay. Like we're, we're very used to that form where it's fun. It, it, it's almost comical to me because I was seeing a lot of my friends that I grew up with and stuff like that. Almost, you know, a lot of people losing their minds because, uh, you know, a wedding's canceled or this is postponed or things like that. And it's kind of like for us, for our culture, we're used to that. So it's like, Eh, we're conditioned. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting perspective. Yeah. As you know, uh, we have a lot of, you know, airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, family members watching. Uh, what words of inspiration do you have for all those troops uh, battling on the front lines against COVID-19? I mean, it's, I mean, you're facing something that we've never faced before. Uh, so this is, this is very, very new for everybody. This is, I've uh, said this on some of our podcasts. This is the first time everyone in the world was simultaneously affected by something. So it's like when you start thinking back, like the, the GWAT, for example, yeah, uh, regular people in, 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 in like middle America, Nebraska and stuff like that, they don't see effects of, of what's going on in Iraq and Afghanistan to day to day. But now at the same time, the entire world is affected by something the same. Uh, so we're in a spot of uncertainty where, you know, we, we have to give kind of the leadership some leeway because they don't have the answers right there because there was no manual for this. So, so you guys out there that are doing it, one of my, one of my very, very close friends that I spend, uh, a lot of time with every week out here in Texas is a surgeon for the Navy. Uh, and he was deployed to New York to, 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 to be uh, on hand in, in the hospitals in New York City. And, and so like, good luck and stay safe. Uh, it sounds like from the reports that I'm getting both from my, my, him and uh, my other friends out at Peterson Air Force Base that are doing the, um, the actual COVID tests uh, that they are staying, they are staying safe themselves, you know, out of, out of, uh, out of over 200 people that were deployed from the Navy over to New York, they only had one of their medical staff get infected. So something's working over there. Uh, and good luck. Thank you for what you guys are doing. And hopefully you received some of the stuff that we sent out to, to, the, to a lot of those high volume locations. Wow, thank you for that, JT. And following up to that, as you know, um, the exchange, we're mission essential during this pandemic. Um, our stores and restaurants, they've been open to take care of military communities. Um, do you have any words of hope for our 33,000 associates that are serving around the world during these challenging times? I mean, I think I, it looks like we're, we're kind of on that crest where it's about to start 
start getting better. Every everything everything I'm seeing is 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 showing positive positive numbers. So it's like we've we've gotten ourselves through through the worst part, hopefully, and uh, keep that attitude up. Absolutely. So you're getting some great feedback from <laughs> our viewers. Leah had uh, mentioned some comments. We still have comments rolling in. Charles Zeller wants you to know that he's been a subscriber for three years, but the exclusive coffee subscription is his favorite. Um, Chris Goodman says, I love my BRCC AK 47. Um, Paul Hastings, uh, he wants to try it. Um, Charles Zeller also likes the range 15. Awesome. Charles. Thank you. Like being a coffee subscriber for three years is amazing. And, uh, Yes, if you are if you're into coffee, the exclusive coffee subscription is that's like Evan and the coffee and the coffee team's baby. Like that's that's the cool stuff that they're going out and they're finding. They're they're doing a very high end coffee and they're only releasing a limited supply of it every month. So Oh wow. You know, yeah, the ECS is a really cool program that Evan created and uh, you guys should definitely check it out. I saw somebody also asked if your coffee is available in K cups. Yes, it is. Uh, we have we have the K cup forms or, or, or boxes of different counts all the way up to really large boxes, you know, so you don't have to 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 stock up all the time. Well, I think Vince is going to be happy to hear that because he's been putting grounds in a cup now for his Keurig. So I think he'll be happy. <laughs> They are, people are making do, even if they don't have your coffee in a K-cup form. <laughs> hey, JT. Pearl Zeller also, sorry, Chief. Oh, go ahead, Leah, sorry. Pearl Zeller also said the quarantine song with Tim Montana and every guest was awesome. <laughs> Thanks, that was, that was, that was all Matt. Uh, Matt and Tim and, and Micah uh, jumped on FaceTime uh, and, and knock that song out in about 24 hours. And then we were able to get on the phone and call all of our friends that, uh, that were in the music realm and, and, and veteran space. And uh, we put that video together very, very quickly. Marisa Connor says that her husband loves your coffee and your videos. So how long does it, set, does it take to set up, create, and produce a video like Colombian Good Good from start to finish? Ooh, that's a unique one uh, because that was a different that was a different style. We actually that was one of the ones that we we had hired a, a third party production team to handle the production of that. So we just we just wanted to see what it was like if we just could show up kind of direct and and be in the video and things like that. But that was one day of shooting uh, the actual video and then a second day of shooting the intro with Matt, which we shot here right right in this spot right here about oh, wow. five days ago or six days ago is the day before the video went out. Um, so yeah, uh, Matt did all, all the editing on that video though. So when you, when you go back and you look, you look at that, he, uh, he, he keeps the editing with him because he likes to, to have the, the vision and control that he has. And, you know, you guys can see what it looks like in the end. That's a great, it's a great, it's a great method. And you guys have, you must, well, you have merchandise too, because Clay Tate says he loves his t-shirt. <laughs> yes, our shirts and, and whoopee hoodies and sweatshirts, we, we get a lot of compliments about those, but we just choose the same stuff that we love. Like we, we, we make things for ourselves first. <laughs> We're like, oh, I like this. And then we just hope other people do too. Hey, JT, Nikita Marie says she got to meet Jared at McCord when they came for a TED Talk. Awesome company. Oh, really? Yeah, that was a, that was a while ago. Yeah. I think that was like 2015 or 16. So four years ago. He remembers. I was wearing, I, I was, I, I, I used a, a funny story to that is I, I like double used a suit that I had rented for a wedding. So, and it was white. So I kind of looked ridiculous on, on that stage. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> hey JT. So tell us what's ahead for black rifle. Uh, so, so looking forward, you know, obviously with the pandemic, it's kind of put retail expansion on pause for a little bit, which was, you know, we are trying our best to put in stores in right near all the major bases and things like that. Cause we're still, 
uh, we're still on the quest to hire as many veterans as we can. And we're going to be able to do that by putting in store after store after store after store. It's just, it's a, it's a, it, it's a long legal process. It's a long, it's a long funding process to, to be able to start doing that. So we're now slowly expanding and putting in new stores, you know, we're slotted to hopefully get a, uh, we're going to get a store in the Fort Bragg's freedom crossing, um, looking you know, dead set on 2022, but you know, let's be positive and hope that it's ready to go by 2021. Um, and then we're just going to continue to kind of expand the retail presence and we're going to continue the entertainment piece in a much larger scale. We're in development of a cartoon right now, (laughs) (laughs) which, you know, imagine, imagine merging Rick and Morty with Archer and us, Uh, (laughs) We're, 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 we're developing possible, um, uh, TV formats for Netflix and Amazon. And then, and then like, like I said, we're, we're starting to, to really step our game up in, in kind of long form cinematic styles to where you'll see, you'll see small, you'll see other things pop out like the music videos and things like that. But the big ones will be, you know, 15, 20 minutes in length and really, really extensive because we're just enjoying you know putting our our skills to use now uh, as filmmakers and it's a lot of fun wow so you have a lot you have a lot coming down the pipe here so if you, if you had if you had a chance any installation if you could put black rifle there besides you know of course all of them you would like to but if you can what would be a, a besides Fort Bragg what other installations would you like to I would go to McCord because that's where I'm from I'm from Kitsap County so I would love to have one right outside of uh uh, joint base, Lewis McCord. McCord all right. How about on base? Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I believe you guys are going to get one first. <laughs> I, I think they're already in development of like three right near you. Ah, there we go. I'm just trying to, you know, give the audience something to look forward to. Out there. <laughs> I'm not spilling the beans. I've been, they, they said I've been leaking a lot of secrets lately by accident. So. Yeah. Chief, Chief likes to do that. He likes to leak stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I like your yeah. use of spilling the beans since we're talking about coffee. That was clever. I don't know well, if you meant to do that. Smart that's team. I like that's that. That's kind of a strategy, a strategy thing that we that we we used to like keep every video in complete secret, but then it was kind of like, why? Like if I tell you that that we have something coming down the pipe that is amazing, you know, that we're doing that we're doing Princess Bride in Vietnam, like that just gets people <laughs> excited and they're ready to see it. So it doesn't really, it doesn't really ruin anything. <laughs> That's what I say. That's what I say. <laughs> Build the excitement. <laughs> That's really good information because I looked this weekend to try and find some co- black rifle to try and I was not successful yet. So <laughs> I guess I'll have to order it. So JT, we all want to know what's in your cup. What's your favorite black rifle product? And then tell us, remind us, um, folks like me, where can we get it? Well, right now I'm drinking Space Bear because that was the most recent ECS and it's really, really good. Um, but normally I'm a Silencer Smooth guy. I love Silencer Smooth. I have tons of it here. Um, and, and I use a, a Chemex pour over uh, and, and love that. So yeah, blackriflecoffee.com. You guys can you guys could sign up for the club and that way you don't have to remember to buy your coffee. It'll auto ship right to your door. Uh, for you. <laughs> Sounds like a good Father's Day gift, maybe too. That's coming up. I, we have a lot of good Father's Day bundles too going up. So check back on that. And you Definitely. have ready to drink products as well. Um, yes. For challenge yeah. people like me who don't want to make my own coffee. <laughs> we, we do have coffee in the can uh, that is slowly, I believe. It's the end of this month when the next shipment goes out everywhere. Um, so if you are, if you are not a, a coffee, you know, someone that makes coffee and you like the canned drinks, keep an eye out for our, our coffee ready to drink option uh, in gas stations and 7-Elevens and hopefully with you guys soon. For sure. Marla wants to know, are there any new flavors coming? Flavors? Uh... I don't know. I would have to ask the the coffee team, but as far as the ECS goes, yes, there are, there's a new one dropping every month. Um, 
and there's the, the bags are really, really cool. The designs are really, really cool. So keep an eye out on that ECS because that is a, a super high quality coffee and it's a, a super fun project that Evan put together. Very good. I think I'm going to have to get a coffee maker. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might, so, converter, you might convert her. No, just to be really just transparent. When we were in the office, Julie and I visited Starbucks every single day. So I did not need a coffee maker at home. And now that I've been home, I'm having to drink coffee from a can. <laughs> <laughs> hey, JT, Michael Connor asked, uh, he says, thank y'all for everything y'all do. Is there any one veteran char charity to give to? Which one would it be? Uh, we currently do a lot. Matt sits on the board of the boot campaign. Uh, that's, that's a, that's a good one because they are, they're just super active in the study of, um, of TBI and they're, they, they do a lot to help people suffering from it. So Matt, Matt is a board member of the, of that charity. Also, we have started working with code, the call of duty endowment. And the good thing about code is their operation costs are covered by Activision, meaning 100% of the dollars that you donate to code go to the cause itself because they have no op costs. They are covered by Activision. So if you want your money to be spent, they have, they have, uh, they have increased or like dropped the amount of money they are putting veterans in jobs for under $500 now. So every $500 that they're getting, they're able to place a veteran in a career. Uh, and they're ran by uh, an, an ex uh, Navy captain. So definitely check out the Call of Duty endowment because it's, it's if you want your money to go as far as it possibly can, the boot campaign and code are two very, very good options. Hey, thanks. Thanks for sharing that, JT, because I definitely look at the operating costs. You know, sometimes yes. you don't need money and 75 percent goes to the overhead and 25 percent exactly. goes to the person. You know, we are very keen on that. When we attach our names to to a nonprofit like we do not, we, we want to look at at the books um, because that's exactly exactly correct. Hey, another um, Paul Hastings says, what coffee you have for the Navy? You know what? Uh, that is a really good question because at the beginning of this year, I started to, I, that was my project because my dad did 30, almost 30 years in the Navy. Uh, I started looking into possibly doing bags for every carrier group and things like that. So I'm still kind of digging through the legalities of utilizing, uh, utilizing, you know, carrier names and stuff like that. As far as the department of the Navy, once I hash that out, yes, you can see some, some stuff that, that, that we're developing for our sailors out there, both uh, surface warfare and sub warfare. There you go, Paul. So if you have a connect up there at the Department of Navy, send him JT's way so he can get that going. <laughs> well, hey, JT, thank you so much. Before we go, do you want to plug any social media handles, websites? Any information? So uh, we, we yeah, we talked we talked about it, Chief. You know, if you're if you're looking for coffee, BlackRifleCoffee.com. You know, the subscription service is both coffee and the cans. So again, if you're somebody that just likes a can drink to grab and go in the morning, go for the go for the can. If you're so if you if you like your coffee ground or whole bean, so you can grind it yourself. You have those options inside the subscription. Um, and other than that, if you want to see my antics, which are uh, you know. On the more edgy side of, of the brand, I am uh, at JT Article 15 on Instagram and Twitch. Every night at Twi on Twitch, we're doing a 10 p.m. show, uh, which is the 15th Aerial Demo Demonstration Squadron, the Wet Boys. <laughs> there you go. You heard it. Ladies, any more comments? Do you see any anything else or before we... Oh, I think we hit all the all the big stuff, but people loved you. People loved a lot of good feedback on here. Um, just that your coffee is amazing. Your products are awesome and they they appreciate you guys and all you do. Awesome. Thank you. I was, hey, this was a pleasure. Hey, Chief, call me anytime. I You, you come down here. I come up to Dallas. All right. I'll do that. I, I will do. I'll keep that in mind for sure. And one thing, um, 
for all your people, all, all the viewers, all veterans out there. JT, I know you're a smart guy. You're probably aware of this. I know you know, you know, I know you know the exchange has a veterans online shopping benefit where all veterans can now shop tax-free online. But more importantly, this year, January 2020, all disabled veterans, zero percent up to 90, 100 percent, because 100 percent could already shop, they can shop at our stores physically. Oh wow. So I'm not That's sure amazing. No, I had no clue. So if you could share that with your people, I'm sure you know a lot of, you know. Absolutely. We'll put that, we'll put that on the show and uh, I'll get with you after this. Cause I would love for you to come on our show one night and just uh, spectate and, and talk to everybody while, while we're flying. Oh, let's do it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your service. Uh, know that this means a lot to the veterans, the active duty, the family members, everyone watching at home. We truly appreciate everything you're doing, you know, to continue to support our veterans and to support the active duty community, especially, you know, still being a mentor out there to the schoolhouse up at Chapman, uh, Chapman, is it Chapman Air Force Base? I think it's, it's Chapman Annex, possibly. Chapman Annex. So thank you so much for your continued support of the military community. We look forward to seeing you on an installation near you coming soon. He says 2022. I'm going to say that maybe the end of 2021, hopefully earlier <laughs> once this COVID thing gets done. You know, so thank you so much, JT. Oh, thanks, Chief. Much love to Black Rifle Coffee Company. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye, y'all.